So let's check out Geeks Linux. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome back to the channel. And today I have another exciting review on a super cool Linux distribution. And today I wanted to delve into the world of Geeks System Linux, which is an advanced and unique distribution in the GNU ecosystem. Now, whether you're a long time subscriber or a newcomer to my channel, Geeks promises to offer a fresh perspective on Linux. So let's jump right into it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, so I'm at geeks.gnu.org. And if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know I aim to uncover unique features of Linux distributions. Now, Geeks is all about freedom and flexibility, and it's evident in its core philosophy. It adheres to the GNU free system distribution guidelines, ensuring that everything included is free software. But what truly makes Geeks shine are its standout features. Now, one of the things I really want to highlight is the GNU Geeks package manager. So let's click on that right fast. That way you guys can see, but it's a state of the art package manager with transactional upgrades and rollbacks. And it uses low level mechanisms from Nix, but define packages as native GAL modules. Now Geeks also focuses on reproducible bills, meaning you can verify that what you receive is the same as what you build locally. And another thing about Geeks, it uses a unique approach to package isolation and duplications, ensuring that different programs and profiles remain isolated while minimizing storage usage. Now, lastly, there is a big community around Geeks and it's welcoming and active and it provides support to newcomers and experienced users alike. And I wanted to cover a couple more things here, but if you go under the help, you can get to the manual. So you can click there, hit manual, select whatever language you need, and you can use the HTML version that'll open up the manual and it'll break down everything for the system, which is super cool. You know, I'm glad they have a reference manual that's so detailed. And then also in order to download it, you can get the standard version or the latest build. I always tell people to get the standard. It's kind of like a stable version, but you can go in, download this version right here. And one cool thing about it, it comes with multiple different desktops on there. And you'll see that when we go through the install, but you can install whatever uh, desktop environment you want once you get it up and going from the selection that they have. And if we go under the installation instructions, this covers pretty much everything. The limitations, hardware considerations, US stick and DVD installation, preparing for installation, manual installation, you know, after system installation, installing geeks in a virtual machine, pretty much any and everything you can think of as far as the system installation of that ISO. So now that we got a, a good overview of geeks impressive features let's move on to the finer details and get the linux distro installed all right so after you boot up the iso it'll pop right into the installer and it's super simple to install so i'm gonna walk you guys through it right fast but the first thing you want to look at is your language so select whatever language you got boom and all i'm doing is pressing enter and then when I need to select something, I'm pressing the space bar. So just wanted to break that down for you guys. And then also select your territory of your language. So you can hit United States. Like for instance, they speak English in, in the UK, but it's a different territory and they speak differently. So that's why it's asking what territory. So just going to hit United States there. And then right here it says, welcome to the GNU Geeks system installer. And then, like, it's, like I said, this will guide you through the installation process. You can go through the graphical install or you can install using the shell based process, which we're gonna use the graphical so you guys can see everything. But so we'll select that. And then you can also reboot if you want to, but let's go down and press enter at the graphical side, select our time zone, scroll down and actually I passed it, but America, boom. Then go down and find your time zone. And mine would be 
Los Angeles. So let's see if we can find it. And there we go. So Los Angeles, hit enter. Boom, now take it to the next step. Keyboard layout. I'm gonna do English US. So basically select where you're from, boom. And then right here, variations of the keyboard layout. All right, so you can select what you want from there. I'm gonna just do English US, boom. And then now you wanna set a host name for the system. I'm gonna just use Geeks as the name. I'm gonna tab down to okay, press enter. Boom, that'll go through. And then also it will connect to the internet. That's what happens after that. That's essentially what that did was set up the hardware and connect to the internet and all that stuff. And it says, by turning on this option, you allow geeks to fetch, fetch substitutes. So basically pre-built binaries doing installation from servers discovered on your local area network. So let's go on press enter. I wanna enable that right here. Set your root password. So let's go on type that in. I'm gonna hit tab and then go down to okay, press enter, and then we have to confirm it. So let's go down and type in our password again, and then confirm it. And then now this is gonna allow you to add a user to the system. So right now it's selected on add, as you can see that with the red around it, press enter. Go down and create your user account, boom. And then the home directory, you can specify a different home directory, which I don't recommend, you know, do it under home, Josh, or whatever your user account does, it'll automatically put it there. Then you wanna select a password or type in a password. And let's go down to okay. Just gonna confirm that password, type it in again, tab, tab, enter, and then boom, we got our account set up. So we can, we have options before we move forward. You can add another account up here, and then you can also delete that account and create another one if you want to. Let's say you messed up on something. You can go on and select to create another one. So let's press OK here. Boom. That'll create that account. And now this is what I was talking about as far as the desktop environment. They have a multiple options for you to set up, you know, whatever you want. So you got GNOME, you got XFCE, you got Mate, Enlightenment, Openbox, Awesome, Desktop Environment, i3, Rat Poison, Emacs, EX, Window Manager. But I'm going to, let's see, do a little something a little different and let's just use my tech. Cause I, I kind of like my tech, I like the design of it, but all you have to do is go down to whichever desktop environment you want, hit the space button and that'll select it. So we got my tech and that's what we want to use for it. Boom, as our desktop environment and press okay. And then also here are some network services that'll pop up. So you can install SH server, so the daemon for it. I'm gonna hit select on, I mean, spacebar on that, that'll select it. You can also do the Tor anonymous network router and then also Mozilla NSS certificates for HTTPS access. And that's selected by default. So let's tab out, go to okay press enter and then also you can set up cups if you guys have never heard of cups but it's basically the print service uh, for your system for most Linux systems they always have that uh, now this has no web interface by default but let's go down and put it on there and then press ok boom that don't install that now we're at the partitioning area and as you can see, you got a couple of options. You got three different options. So you can do guide it, use entire disk. That's the easiest method. And actually the second one is just as easy as the first one, but it just adds encryption into the mix. So it'll encrypt the whole drive for you. I'm gonna skip that because I don't need it as a virtual machine. If you're doing this on hardware, I recommend you encrypt your system. And there also a manual way of partitioning. So let's go down and press enter here. That's what we wanna do. I wanna use the entire disk and then select that disk. Essentially it's selected already. It's, it'll look for the disk on the system and you select the correct disk. So if you're doing like a dual boot, just make sure you select the right disk. That's essentially what this is for. So press enter. Now this is the partition table. You got two different partition table types and that's GPT. I've talked about GPT in the past as well as MS-DOS. I'm gonna use GPT. That should be good to go. So let's go down and hit continue there and it'll set up the partition table for us. And now it will go through and set up the partitioning scheme. So you got a couple options here as well. 
well actually two so you can do everything on one partition or you can separate your home directory which is something i recommend people do you know what i'm saying you can back up your home directory and move it over to another system and everything should work the same as long as you got the same applications on it and all that good stuff installed then you can move your home directory around you can even sync your home directory between two different systems as long as you keep them up to date as far as the software and all that stuff so the configuration files will work properly now scroll down press enter i'm gonna separate that home directory this is a breakdown of everything that's going to partition for us on that hard drive uh, i'm not going to go through it all but i mean well bios grub and then our root directory and we got linux swap it adds uh, about two gigs a, a swap and then our home directory it uses the remainder of the drive so let's hit tab take us down press ok and that'll partition our drive for us and this is just a verification are we sure we want to create these partitions because everything on that drive is going to be wiped and it's going to write out those partitions or create those partitions and then starting the installation after that so there we go partitioning format in the drive only takes a couple seconds boom and then this is our configuration file for everything this is what it's going to do when it installs so you can go through this you know all our features as you can see you know like for instance i just want to show you guys something but this is where it creates the account you know what i'm saying it's, it's certain things throughout here that you'll see and you can review this this basically covers everything that's going to happen during the install but let's go down and tab you can oh and that's the thing you can go through and edit if need to if need be or you can exit but definitely go to okay and that'll as long as everything is you know set the way you want it go down and hit okay and that'll start the install so let's go down and press enter and let it go from there and i'll be back when it actually finishes there's no need to you know bother it go get some coffee or something sit down wait for your system to be uh done so be back in a sec all right as you can see the installation is complete last thing you want to well, you guys can't see this, but it says, please enter or press enter to continue. So let me just press enter and it will pop up with a button to reboot the system and also let you know that it's successfully installed on the system. All right. And this is exactly what I was talking about. It basically says, congratulations, installation is not complete. All you have to do is hit the reboot button and I'll be back with the system fully up and running and I'll walk through it a little bit. All right, so our installation is complete of geeks and just showing you guys, I know this will look different depending on whatever desktop environment you're installing on. Uh, so I kind of focus on what to do once it's installed as far as in the command line. So let's go to our system tools and open up our Mate terminal and ooh, the colors look crazy. So let's go up in here and let's change the profile preferences. Let's go colors, let's change that. Actually, let's go up in here and find one of the ones. Let's go to Linux console. Let's see what it looks like. Cool. So that looks a little better. You guys can actually see the terminal. And let me open it up again. It should. Yeah, there we go. And let's zoom in a little bit so you guys kind of see what I'm doing. But the first thing you want to do is update Geeks. And this is using that Geeks package manager. So let's go on and uh, type in the commands. But Geeks, the first command you want to run is Geeks pull. And this will basically pull down everything from the repository for geeks or whatever and compare it with your system and then it, that'll allow you to install applications on geeks and so i go down and run it this process actually takes a while because one thing about this package manager or this system period it uses you know the git repositories and that's why the commands look familiar to the git commands. You know what I'm saying? Like git pull, push, you know, those different commands like that or whatever. But once it checks, you know, the repository, it'll show you all the updates for the system. And it even shows you changes based on those repositories as far as packages that have been updated within this git repository. It's a little bit different, you know, from a different, from any other Linux distros. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's slightly different, but I'll just let this run in the background and just kind of look at the desktop environment for a little bit, which, I mean, if you've used my type before, you'll see, I mean, it comes with base software. So under accessories, you got archive manager, basically the all of Mate tools. So Mate calculator, font viewer, search Pluma, which is the text editor, screenshots. You can take screenshots, the eye of Mate, that's that image viewer. They got a little bit of office stuff. You might want to get Libre on here. Libre office. Let's go sounds. I think it has pulse audio, I believe, from what I've seen. 
and then let's go under let's see system tools uh, you got your kojo which is basically a file manager you know log viewer disk monitor disk analyzer you know mate system monitor so you can open that up check out the system see how it's being how it's using the resources and one here it just kind of breaks it all down you can go through each side and look at the processes the file system as well so let's go back here under system tools and let's just see what else is here so we got our power statistics so that allows you to change the the power management on the system now places of course that's all your locations meaning your directories on the system so home directory desktop all that stuff all that good stuff now under systems you can go into here this will allow you to make any personal changes to the system so the easiest way to go is just go to the control center and you can find whatever you want they got themes on here look and feel you know different things you can put you can do with the system and like you could add information to it, change your password if you want to there uh, which i recommend you just do it in the in the command line but that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you use Mate, it's not that difficult to use. Uh, let's see what kind of backgrounds they got up in here. And it's got a few, that's cool. So it downloaded all the Mate, you know, backgrounds and everything for the system. So that's dope. Now, like I said, this Geeks pool will take a while. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest, I don't wanna wait and I'll just kind of explain the next command that you would run after this. And that's basically uh, Geeks upgrade and and let's just open up another terminal and type it out for you guys so you guys can see it i'm not gonna run it but it's essentially geeks upgrade and that will upgrade your system once it sees all the changes and all that good stuff and let's say you want to upgrade a specific package it's the same exact way so geeks upgrade and then that package name so let's say like emacs let's say you want to upgrade emacs only then you want to put that package name in there it's similar to you know ubuntu and different it's, it's a little bit different and just show you something else like for instance a few other things with geeks while this thing is pulling down uh let me zoom in but you can type geeks and then package and then dash dash list dash install and press enter that'll list out the packages that you have installed and as you can see we ain't really got nothing installed on here because this is based on the packages i have on the system that i've installed under my profile all right the, the pull command is completed and i just wanted to show you guys the upgrade for it and one thing you'll notice that you don't have to use sudo with this command like other linux distros you have to use sudo but each account has its own profile on the system but that's essentially so and, and you don't have to type sudo so let's just run upgrade again it's going to say nothing because there's nothing there because there's no software installed on the system which was pointless for me doing this you know what i'm saying but i still wanted to just run it just show you guys and let's get something installed and the example i see a lot is geeks install emacs even though I don't use Emacs at all, I haven't really used Emacs. Let's get Emacs installed. Let's see what actually happens and it'll install the, that following package. And so if we go back over to our other terminal and we run the list again, you'll see Emacs there. And I already ran it twice. I cleared the screen, but I just wanted to show you guys But that GNU package dash dash list install. You'll see Emacs is installed now. And by showing you those few things, that should get you started on the system. And then you can start working on it from there, getting it set up however you want it. But the most difficult part about, you know, getting into Geeks is understanding that Geeks package manager and getting everything set up. Now, as always, I appreciate your continued support, you know, here on the Keep It Techie channel. And if you're excited about Geek Systems Linux as we are, or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to share your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more Linux related content and tech reviews. Thanks for being a part of my community and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Keep it techie.